Good morning, Europe. It's Thursday, the 6th of January. A very warm welcome to the program. Let's start by looking at our top stories. Violent unrest continues in Kazakhstan. Now a Russian-led military alliance says it's sending in a peacekeeping force. Serbia lashes out at Australia after top-ranked tennis player Novak Djokovic is denied entry to the country in a row over vaccination rules. And heightened security in Washington, D.C. as America marks one year since the violent assault on the U.S. Capitol. Peacekeepers from a Russian-led alliance are being sent to Kazakhstan after the country's president pleaded for help in controlling protests which have escalated into violence. This comes as mass protests in the city of Almaty gave way to carnage after police reportedly fired at demonstrators before fleeing. What began as anger over fuel price rises has triggered widespread political grievances. The president of the Central Asian country has called on neighbours who are members of the Collective Security Treaty Organisation to help stabilise the unrest. These terrorist gangs are international gangs. They have received extensive training abroad and their attack on Kazakhstan should be viewed as an act of aggression. Earlier, the president had vowed to take harsh measures to stamp out the violent demonstrations. Nevertheless, undeterred protesters stormed the presidential palace and the mayor's office, setting fire to both. The US and the United Nations have called for calm. Kazakhstan is considered an important country, situated in a strategic position. It has been under the rule of the same party since gaining independence from the Soviet Union in 1991. Kate Millinson is an associate fellow in the Russia and Eurasia program at UK-based think tank Chatham House. She says the protest movement is about much more than the recent rise in fuel prices, and that poses a major challenge for the government. It's going to be very difficult um, for the government to address the myriad grievances that we see um, coming today, and those are um, both political and um, socio socioeconomic in nature. But they relate to kind of long term structural changes um, within the Kazakh political economy, which will be very hard to address in the short term. And so far, they haven't appeased the demonstrators in any shape or form. The other Central Asian states will be watching Kazakhstan very closely. Um, but these countries, although they were all um, under the kind of post Soviet yoke, they differ substantially from each other. Um, and what we saw in Belarus is very different to what we see in Kazakhstan. And the main problem facing Kazakhstan today is the fact that over the last 30 years, the Kazakh government has decimated the systemic opposition or any attempts to have a systemic opposition in the country. And so now this, this, this movement we see is very amorphous. It's very grassroots. And there is no leadership with which the Kazakh government can actually negotiate to try and quell the protests, to try and come to some agreement to stop um, the movements. But Russia is playing a key role in, 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 in what is happening behind the scenes, particularly with the West and Russia at loggerheads at the moment. Kazakhstan is seen as Russia's, one of Russia's um, key allies. And Putin and Nazarbayev, the first president of Kazakhstan, very much respect each other. And as we know, Putin loathes coloured um, revolutions um, and he will not let this happen on, on his southern flank. Australian border police have cancelled the visa of Serbian tennis star Novak Djokovic after his arrival to Melbourne on Wednesday. The world number one was held at the city's airport for several hours, despite initially being granted a medical exemption for the country's COVID-19 vaccination requirements by Australian Open organisers and two medical boards. The champion had high hopes of defending his Grand Slam title. Rules are rules. And there are no special cases. Entry with a visa requires double vaccination or a medical exemption. Um, I'm advised that such an exemption was not in place and as a result he is subject to the same rule 
as anyone else. I also want to stress that ultimately this is the responsibility of the traveller. Reports say Djokovic was taken to a government detention hotel pending an outbound flight. It's believed the visa was revoked as the nine-time Australian Open winner and his team have provided insufficient evidence to back up immunity. It is unclear if he will depart Australia or remain in quarantine and fight the deportation order. Djokovic has not spoken about his vaccination status, but last year he said he was opposed to vaccination. After a long night of heated debate, French MPs have voted in favour of a bill amending the country's COVID-19 health pass. The new legislation will bar unvaccinated people from much of public life. The National Assembly vote was delayed after President Macron sparked outrage when he said his strategy was to, quote, piss off the unvaccinated. His team said his comment was appropriate given the huge rise in new COVID infections. When you talk to the French people today, many of them tell you that people who choose not to be vaccinated should not even be treated in hospital. Italy is also seeing high infection numbers fueled by the Omicron variant. And on Wednesday, the government backed a measure making vaccinations compulsory for the over 50s. It puts the country in the vanguard of Europe in cracking down on those who refuse to get an anti-Covid shot. I think that mandatory vaccination should be extended to everyone, or at least to all adults. So I see it positively. In the UK, on the optimistic side, there are changes to Covid rules for travel to England, with the scraping of pre-departure tests and quarantine on arrival until the traveller has tested negative. For residents in England, the government's plan B on restrictions is to continue for three weeks. And in Germany, a shortening of self-isolation periods for key workers is being proposed. Those vaccinated can end isolation due to an infection after only five days with a negative PCR test. Opinion is divided on French President Emmanuel Macron's comments on the unvaccinated. Some hail them as voicing what the majority of the public, who are vaccinated, agree with, while others deride them as needlessly divisive comments. I want to bother the unvaccinated because in my family there are some who are unvaccinated and for the moment I refuse to see them unless they do a self-test. I say he's right. They didn't sell it to us like that. They told us it's two doses and now it's three, four. I'm only going to do two. After a while, enough is enough. As the presidential election nears, Mr Macron's comments have undoubtedly raised the political temperature, setting the stage for a heated contest. It will become apparent in the next few weeks if his remarks convince more to get vaccinated or convince fewer to get their booster. Metaverse and non-fungible tokens are expected to garner a lot of attention at the Consumer Electronics Show the world's most sought-after annual technology show, which began on Wednesday. Metaverse technology has generated a lot of curiosity in the past year, following Facebook's massive plans to move in this direction. We're starting to talk about Metaverse now, the same way we started to talk about the Internet in the early 1990s. And so if you remember back to that time when we were all using 56K modems and dial-up Internet service, it was impossible to imagine the things we'd be doing online today, and I think the same is true with Metaverse. As 2022 begins, consumer technology spending is high. There's strong demand for smartphones, digital health devices, home entertainment gear and streaming services, which propel much of the projected growth. COVID has accelerated um, a whole bunch of different trends we were already seeing, maybe like digital fitness. And then new areas like actually being really effective when you're working from home, looking good on those Zoom and Teams calls. Um, those are things that we weren't necessarily expecting, but those have been propelled and we'll see that at CES this year. The CES has been at the forefront of new technologies. The DVD, Xbox and Blu-ray were all previewed here before going global. 
At this year's event, cooling masks have driven race cars and an electrical animal that gently nibbles at Wood's finger all hope to emulate past successes.